Welcome to another GED math video from ultimateged.com. In this video, we will be looking at some must-know, important GED math test questions. These questions are specifically selected to help you develop the skills you need to pass the GED with ease. It's important that you watch all the videos in this series. We will put a playlist link in the description and the comment section. Check it out. Let's dive in. Simplify the expression. 4 times x minus 3 plus 3 times 2x minus 5 minus 2 times x plus 6. A. 6x minus 29. B. 8x minus 29. C. 8x minus 39. D. 6x minus 39. To pass the GED math, you must be good at simplifying expressions. Students get a question like this wrong because they make mistakes with the negatives or minus. To solve this, we will distribute the constants outside the parentheses to each term inside the parentheses and multiply. For the first one, we will have 4 times x, which is 4x. Then we have 4 times negative 3, which is minus 12. We work on the second part. 3 times 2x is 6x. And 3 times negative 5 is minus 15. Then we work on the last part. Negative 2 times x is minus 2x. And negative 2 times 6 is negative 12. Next, combine the like terms. Combine the x terms together and the constant terms together. 4x plus 6x minus 2x equals 8x. Then minus 12 minus 15 minus 12 is minus 39. Therefore, the correct answer is option C, 8x minus 39. Please encourage us to post more videos by liking, sharing, and subscribing. We really appreciate it. A school's budget for textbooks is $2,500. Each math textbook costs $50, and each science textbook costs $75. The school needs to purchase exactly 20 math textbooks. What is the maximum number of science textbooks they can purchase without exceeding their budget? A. 15 science textbooks B. 18 science textbooks C. 20 science textbooks D. 25 science textbooks The GED math test has a lot of everyday scenario word problems. For questions like this, you can set it as a single equation and solve it. However, you don't have to do that. Let's look at the solution without setting up a single equation. We are told how many math textbooks must be purchased. We must buy 20, each costing $50. So the total amount of the budget spent on math textbooks is 50 times 20, which is 1,000. You can use the rest of the money to buy the science textbooks. Since the total is $2,500, what you'll have left will be 2,500 minus 1,000. That is 1,500. Each science textbook costs $75. So to find how many science books you can purchase with 1,500, you need to divide 1,500 by 75. We do the division to get 20. The correct answer is C. The school can buy 20 science textbooks. Mr. Johnson is planning to build a new patio in his backyard that consists of two adjoining shapes, a rectangle and a semicircle. The rectangle is 12 meters long and 8 meters wide. The semicircle will be added to one of the shorter sides of the rectangle with its diameter equal to the width of the rectangle. Mr. Johnson needs to calculate the total area of the patio to determine how much paving material he should purchase. What is the area of the new patio he plans to build? Pi equals 3.14. A. 104.75 square meters. B. 113.32 square meters. C. 130.34 square meters. D. 121.12 square meters. This is a typical geometry word problem. For geometry, it is important to get a diagram so you can have a clear picture of what you are working on. 
We know Mr. Johnson is building a backyard that consists of two adjoining shapes, a rectangle and a semicircle. We know the dimension of the rectangle as 12 meters long and 8 meters wide. The semicircle is attached to the shorter side, so we can attach it here. Now we want to find the total area of the patio. We will calculate the area of each shape and then add the areas. Let's start by finding the area of the rectangle. Area of a rectangle is the length times the width. So we will have 12 times 8. This will give us 96 meters squared. Next, we calculate the area of the semicircle. We know a semicircle is half a circle. The area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. Therefore, the area of a semicircle is half times pi r squared. Or we can simply write it as pi r squared over 2. To find the area, we will need the radius, r. We can see that the diameter of the semicircle is the same as the width of the rectangle. This is 8 meters. We have the diameter, but we need the radius. Radius of a circle is half of the diameter. So radius is half of 8, which is 4. We put the 4 in the formula. We have pi, which is given as 3.14, times the radius 4, squared divided by 2. We work this out with our calculator to get 25.12. We add the area of the two shapes, 96 plus 25.12. This will give us 121.12 square meters. So the correct answer is option D. Solve the system of equations. 2x plus 3y equals 9. x minus y equals 2. a. x equals 2, y equals 1. b. x equals 3, y equals 1. c. x equals 4, y equals 2 d, x equals 3, y equals 2. There are several good ways to solve this question. You can watch our video on simultaneous equations for that. On the GED math, the best way to solve this question is by checking which of the multiple choice answers satisfy the equations. I always start with the equation that is easy. For this, I'll look at x minus y equals 2. If I pick option A, x equals 2 and y equals 1. Place it in the second equation. 2 minus 1 is not 2, so option A is wrong. For option B, x equals 3 and y equals 1. We put that into the second equation. 3 minus 1 is 2, so this satisfy the second equation. We have to check if it satisfy the other equation. We have 2 times 3 plus 3 times 1. This equals 9 so it satisfy the first equation also. The correct answer is therefore option B, since it satisfy both equations. A car rental company charges $50 per day, plus $0.20 per mile for renting a car. If a customer rents a car for three days and drives 150 miles, how much will the rental cost? A. $120 B. $135 C. $150 D. $180 There are two charges in this question. To solve this problem, we'll calculate the total cost of renting the car by adding the daily charge to the mileage charge. Let's start by calculating the daily rental cost. The cost per day is $50. The customer rents the car for three days. The total daily rental cost is therefore 3 days times $50 per day. This will be $150. Now let's calculate the mileage cost. The cost per mile is $0.20. The customer drives 150 miles. The total mileage cost is therefore 150 miles times $0.20 per mile. This will be $30. We can now add the daily rental cost and the mileage cost. The total rental cost equals $150 plus $30. This equals $180. The correct answer is therefore D, $180. Before you go to the next video, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so yet.
We have a lot of videos coming up. Check out the playlist, like, and share. Thank you. See you in the next video.